Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Artisans, which is brought to you by V Games. It's for two to four players, ages eight and up, and games generally run about 30 to 45 minutes. Through the centuries, artisans have been skilled workers, specialized craftsmen in creating art, functional or decorative objects, sculptures, drawings, jewelry, clothes, and constructions of different shapes and sizes. The work of artisans has shaped the history of art, and some of these creations have reached worldwide fame. They influence even the modern world. Artisans is a fast and exciting but challenging family card game where you are trying to develop your skills in the use of seven different materials. Textiles, clay, wood, stone, glass, gold, and metal in such a way so that your level of expertise in these materials grants you the necessary skills to craft beautiful art objects. So grab your tools and join me as we explore the world of artisans. So this is an early look at artisans as the campaign will take place in October. But let me go over some of the things and give you a glimpse of what this game is gonna be like. So you have a deck of artisan cards. Now this is something every player will get is one of these artisans. You have a special ability that will take you through the course of the game. You've got material cards. Material, material cards are what you're going to be gaining skill in so you can build art objects, which takes us to the other deck, is your art object deck. Now there's some variation in setup here based on player count and how you set up those art objects but this is basically what it's gonna look like. I'm currently set up for a two player game here. Each player is gonna get a hand of six of these material cards to start the game, and then you're basically ready to go. Now, the game is gonna take place over 12 months, and you have a nice card tracker for that as well as you move through the course of the game. And along with your six cards of materials you're starting the game with, you will get to pick one of these artisans that you get to play through the course of this game, and it is very different how they work for each of them, and there's some in-game scoring with a lot of them, so you'll want to be using them and keeping that in mind as you're trying to get the different skills and the different art objects through the course of the game. So you will get to pick those, and like a lot of games, this one is gonna have the youngest player go first in picking an artisan. So your main goal here is to have the most victory points, and you'll do that by increasing your skills in any of the different materials, and then using those specialized skills to create all these precious art objects. In doing so, you'll get victory points for those and for the skills that you've learned through the course of the game. And gameplay here is very straightforward. Every round or every month of the game, there are 12 that you'll go through, has two phases. The first phase is collect. You're going to be either collecting different materials that you can specialize in, or you're going to be using those skills that you've acquired to craft the different art objects. And then phase two of the round is all about developing those material skills. So you'll be developing, trying to lay down new skills in different materials, adding to materials you already have, upping the level and how good you are at a specific type of skill. So in this first phase, the collect phase, one of the two options you have is to trade materials, simply going to the marketplace. Now, you can ever only have six cards in your hand, so if you go for a new card, you'll have to swap it with one in your hand. And if you do so, the one you put back in the marketplace can't be adjacent to the same type of material. So you have to keep that in mind always. Now, if you have less than six cards, you can just go to the marketplace and draw one and put it in your hand for later use when you go to develop those skills or you have the option of crafting an art object. Now you can only craft one art object per round, but when you do so, you have to use those skills that you've been acquiring through the course of the game. So what does that look like? Well, you'll see the art objects have requirements about what type of material skill that you need in order to acquire that card and use it for scoring at the end of the game. So, but there are different levels of those skills that may be required. You could have one, two, and three, and so on for that type of skill. And the skills that you're putting into play, and we'll go over this in a minute, but they have different levels on them as well. So as you place them out in front of you into your kind of tableau here, you're going to be upping the ante and cre increasing your skill set as you move through the course of the game. So this first phase of the round will continue turn after turn until someone goes to the marketplace and grabs the first player token which will mean every other player will get one more chance at trading here in the marketplace. But then we move to the second phase and the player who has that first player token is going to start it off. 
So the second phase of the round is that development of materials. What you're really doing is enhancing your skills in a certain type of material that you'll use to craft those art objects. Now, if you're learning a new material the first time you're laying it down, then you'll place it at a level one. But it's important to keep in mind that when you lay down the level two cards in the next round, well, then you have to lay down either equal to or less than what you did in the previous level of that particular type of skill. So if you lay down two level ones, the next time you add to this particular skill for level two, you can lay down two or one in order to do that. But then you have to also be mindful when you go to level three and four and so on. So you'll need to level up those skills, obviously, to get the bigger and better art objects, but you have to be very careful about how you use the materials in the right way at the right time. And not only are you trying to level up the skill set that you have, but the number of cards you have there are going to add to your point total at the end of the game. So having like four level ones and then four level twos, you're going to get a lot more score for that particular skill set. And of course, adding in all the different art objects can really exponentially cause you to possibly win the game as you get all those victory points and so forth. So you don't want to just lay down a one, two, three, four for the skill because obviously you are after more victory points than your opponents. So again, your main goal here is to develop your skills, get as many cards and plays as you can to get all those victory points as well as giving you skill enough to build and craft all those amazing art objects, especially the higher point valued ones. So you'll continue this way through the 12 rounds and at the end you're going to total up all your points for all your skills as well as those art objects. But you may have additional benefits based on the artisan that you chose, like the carver which I really like because you get an extra three points for every wood and stone and or both type of art object that you created. So whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the ultimate artisan. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, don't forget that this campaign will hit in October, so keep an eye out for it, but let me just say that this is definitely a family-friendly game, and what's nice here is that it's easy to learn, easy to teach, but there's a lot of interesting choices to be made as you put together the right skills and get enough victory points. And it does become this race as you try to go for those art objects and have the best skills and use the marketplace to your advantage to enhance your skill set and giving you that ability to get those really high-end art objects. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.